So let's see where the numbers will land. Is this going to be the prize? Is this going to the prize that you are looking for? It gets going. Hello, hello. All right. Uh, I am now in the BYD seal. This is the premium variant. And uh, this is now the uh, media drive. So let me check everything before I roll off. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from uh, BYD, Malaysia. All right. My name is Shafiq and I'll be your leading car for the convoy today. And our route will be from here uh, up until Bulatan Kapung Pandan and then we go ahead to back highway. I do appreciate that they didn't uh, put it on Malaysia, super loud mode. You can at uh, okay. enough break. So after the U-turn, we're going to go for a quick uh, pick stop for a driver change. And after that, we reroute back to um, DRS again. So if you guys are ready, in two minutes time, uh, we shall uh, proceed with the convoy. Thank you. Two minutes time. All right, noted. Thank you. So the aircon thing is permanently on. That's very good. Um, For car number 16, 17, 18, uh, this will be a premium pack. And uh, for 19 and 20, it will be a performance pack. All right, so later. Uh. Yeah, we shall move around. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right, follow. All right. All right, drive safe. It's rolling drive. off. Steering is very light. All right. Okay. All done. Please wear your seatbelt. And uh, please follow the traffic rule as well. Do not overtake. Uh, maintain your current position. And uh, have a pleasant drive with uh, BYDC. Okay, in terms of visibility, you have the two haunches on the ends of both wheel arch. So that helps with uh, knowing where the sides are, the front sides are. But the front end is, the, the fact that it dips really low, you totally cannot see where your front is. Okay, it takes a little while to get used to. But the front end is very short. So at least you know right after that haunch, that's where your front is, okay? Steering wheel is very light, like all China cars. Very easy to drive in town. Uh, I wish I can sit a little bit lower. That's my first sensation now. Okay, asking my back to wear seatbelt. Because, oh. Okay. What? The signals? Oh, that's how it sounds. <laughs> okay, let's try how the horn sounds. Yes, that's a nice sound. Okay. So we're turning out into uh, Imbi here. Thank you. Thanks for stopping the traffic for us. Electric cars are fantastic when you drive around town. They are just so smooth, so relaxing, so uh, effortless to drive, to be honest. What does this do? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, brake modulation is good as well. ACC is active when I press the button on my left part of my steering. ACC is active. Increase the speed to 90. Uh, how do I do the uh, more advanced version? 
the motorbike on my right side, left side. Just need to get out of here. Sees the car in front. Do I press it again? Okay, ICC. So it's ACC and then ICC, which includes lane keep assist, I presume. I'm not touching the accelerator pedal now. I'm just gonna let the car do its thing, hopefully. Uh, come on, come on. Does it accelerate? Yes, it does. Does it follow the lane? Ask me to hold the steering wheel. I am holding it. And... Oh, I keep using the left signal stop. See, the thing is, is, every time I go into a car that feels really much like a European car when it comes to, you know, quietness, feel, I automatically use my left hand to activate the turn signals. Uh, because that's sort of how differentiates Japanese cars and European cars. So I need to get used to this, all right? Uh, in terms of the whole feel of interior and all that, right? I have to say, China cars, um, yeah, they are well above similarly priced Japanese cars these days. Yeah, overall quality wise, at least first perceived quality. They feel better, they feel nicer to the touch, okay? Interesting. The dash to the, the door has a molding that sort of gels with the dashboard. Uh, my right side is a bit more protruded than my left side. Uh, obviously, this design is from the left-hand drive version and they adapt it to the right-hand drive, probably. I don't think this is intentional it, and it doesn't it cannot be that big a part so the doors are probably lock stock barrel from China and then the panel here is made elsewhere so the right hand drive version have this inconsistency I guess I'll, be, I'll have to check other cars to make sure that's the case as well but these are small minor things all right it's it's one of the most sellable BYD models out there and it looks really good on the move. I have to say, it looks good. Uh, I don't like how the signal sounds. I'm sure you can change it. Okay. Modes. Let's see. And now I'm on Eco. I'll go into Sport. And then above Sport is normal or it, it rotates around. Okay. Oh, I can't press it or what? I just talk. I just twist the, the toggle. I just twist it and it changes the modes. That's it. It doesn't Yeah, doesn't do Alright. I see see activated. It breaks by itself, it steers by itself, it reads the lines. That's good. Ask me to hold my steering wheel, say I'm a bit too left to the side. Overall, uh, seats feel good. Uh, the size of the car inside here. Um, I like the full size seats. I love the shoulder support. And performance driver's door trim whereby for performance uh, variant there is a chai lock button so that will be only for so he was saying that the only way you can differentiate between sitting inside a performance or a premium model is that the performance model has the child lock button on the windows panel switches whereas the standard one doesn't uh, the, st the standard one you just press one button is for the windows yeah. and performance is all-wheel drive yeah Okay, slow traffic around town, so I don't think I get to experience much. But I have to say something is that the whoa, where's the blower? Okay, it's, it's here. Okay, the size of the car is not huge, even though the rear seat room is spacious. It's a wide car, okay, it's wider than usual C segments. But overall, it's a C segment car. However, I look at it, it's a C segment car. Okay. 
I mean, the the main reason this was created is to challenge the Tesla Model 3, nothing else, you know. And in terms of comparing the interior of this versus the Tesla Model 3, this one has a lot more uh, user-friendly features, put it that way. Like, everything here looks, there are more things for you to control immediately, directly. And uh, there are more touch points, more sophistication with this design and execution as compared to the Model 3, right? But Model 3, the way Tesla creates the Model 3 uh, makes you accept the fact that it is on a totally different uh, design philosophy, you know? It, it is simplistic design to its maximum. Okay, that's what the, oh, I love the ride quality, man. It's so plush. It is so plush on the move. Uh, that's the thing. This can only be done by an electric vehicle because for any C7 car, uh, to have this type of ride quality is impossible for a small car to have this type of ride quality, okay? Impossible. So let me deactivate everything lovely so plush this is like riding in uh, you know the kind of sensation where it absorbs everything and just delays it and then just just soaks up everything can only be had in something that is 5 series and above that's why electric cars make so much sense for consumers because you are paying this type of price and you are in a size you're in cars of this size but yet the sensation that you get when you when you drive and ride in it is of that of a much bigger car you know that on the move is a good looking car okay i'm looking at the, the one in front of course the the one strip tail lamp helps makes the car looks wider than it is but the overall proportions everything is just yeah nice swing what is swing you mean i can oh yeah that's the reason you want electric <laughs> yeah it's so good okay the air vents not having the toggle is because you can put it on swing auto oscillation right it's so nice so that it it, it, it auto oscillates just blows the air like that and for some reason the panamera doesn't have it even though it has a it has electromechanically you know operated yeah how does it steer how does it steer it's a bit of a delay yeah but I like it I like the ride quality I like the ride quality So comfortable. Ah. Okay. Toll. Tolls are always good for EVs. All right, there we go. This one is 5.7 seconds. This is the premium model, not the performance model very nice acceleration I really think that when you have to drive an EV right yeah you'll be why would you even want to go back to petrol cars if this is your one and only car you know and you want comfort and all that I'm trying to do away with the uh, speed sensing thing is is pretty annoying it is outright annoying uh, to be telling me this and that everything uh, let me try what what is that hi BYD Sorry. try me again please switch off speed warning could you repeat that please switch off speed limit warning Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. Yeah, okay. 
cancel. <laughs> How do I turn it off? It's going third, third. But I don't blame the car, I blame Malaysia because you're not supposed to set a 60 kmh speed limit on a highway, on a freeway. You're not supposed to do that, okay? can definitely feel the road how do I switch it off yeah that's the thing that's the thing with these modern cars they annoy you help settings vehicle settings Steering assist, blah 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 blah. Head up display, blah 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 blah. Greetings, no notification, reminders off. No, it's still there. Help me off it. Uh, no, ADAS. Okay, okay, intelligent cruise control, high beam assist, driver attention warning, off, off, yes, uh, traffic sign recognition, uh, off, oh, intelligent speed limit information, traffic sign recognition, off, everything off so for the next person driving my car do thank me i have helped you switch off everything okay oh, got it. so let's try a sudden lane change okay it's all right tidy control i did that at 80 kmh so it's all right but city traffic, I can't do much. All right, but nevertheless, nevertheless, let's try this now. ACC active, one more press is ICC, but just now I switched off most of ICC stuff, so I do not know how intelligent it is now. <laughs> I try my best to turn off everything just now. I reduce the distance the car in front and now I'm gonna just place my two fingers here to trick the car that I am okay it uses torque sensing it doesn't use capacitive sensing capacitive sensing is when you touch the steering wheel and then it deactivates that thing that warns you to hold your steering wheel which BMW is using uh, each has its own good torque sensing sometimes you need to yank the steering wheel a little bit just to let it know that you are holding it, okay? We're now in we're now in Bukit Jalil and uh, let me change up to the car in front. Okay, I accelerated and then the car brake heavily because ICC is being activated and it wants to keep the distance with the car in front. That's why it did the heavy braking just now. And I hope I don't piss off anybody. And uh, let's see what it does now. Oh, I'm on my own because the steering angle is too big and there's a silly Vios here that came out from nowhere so I couldn't steer a little bit more aggressively just now to try out the car the guy just dived in on squeezing himself in okay anyway we're gonna make a u-turn and we're gonna take back the max highway as well Vios doing what Vios does yeah my V doing what my V does might be chasing Vios. <sighs> Whatever. Okay, uh, let me turn this off. ICC deactivated. Overriding. What is overriding? Overriding means what? You you drive it for me. What is it about? Oh, I love the fact that my heads up display actually shows me what is active now. So I can see that my steering is active. My 
cruise control is active, adaptive cruise control, and my lane keep assist is active. And if the angle is too big, it turns to white color, I have to steer it myself. Now it's all, all are in green color, which is pretty all right. Let's see, it's slowed down. See, it's white color now. Now it's back to green because it reads the road markers and then again slow down not knowing what to do because it sees a very sharp angle. Not bad, not bad. I like cars when in uh, adaptive cruise control mode to always let me know, to always let me know what uh, it is currently seeing. All right, what it understands of its environment is a very important thing for me. Okay, should be done. Don't don't think there's any driver change. Come again. Don't think there's any driver change. Okay, for car number twenty. Thank you. Yeah, we are stopping for one. Thanks. All right, uh, they're waiting for one more car. Uh, number 13, please do a quick diver change. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, whoa. Whoa, that's some intricately designed phone holder. Interesting. For horizontal. Hmm. Oh, it holds the side as well. Right. Pretty interesting. Uh, at the side highway, uh, entering back the uh, back highway. So all the work has been completed. So uh, let's be aware of the oncoming traffic and let's go. Thank you. Yep, let's go. Good to go. Thank you. Let's go. Heavy traffic day. Nevertheless. Oh, it's near my house now. They could have dropped me off. <laughs> so, again, uh, I love driving electric cars, especially when I'm doing my daily stuff. When I'm not doing my gunting run, when I'm not doing my whatever, I absolutely love them because they're quiet, comfortable, they do their stuff and all that. Now comes the question, uh, of you know i think i think for most of you who are considering one you should know during that highway you should know your options you should know um, your limitations okay if you predominantly 90 percent of your time drive around town meet your clients do all this fetch your kids and all that electric cars are wonderful for that absolutely wonderful and from the last few rounds that I'm using uh, electric cars, where there are more and more chargers, I also realized one thing. The refuel regime of electric cars is, wow, this car corners it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> okay. Uh, it doesn't understeer. Pushes the front in. Very nice. Very nice for gunting runs. Very, very nice, I presume. Uh, back to that, what I was discussing. The only reason we are comparing, oh, uh, five minute refueling versus uh, 40 minute charging or one hour charging is because our concept of using all our fuel and then we go to the petrol station to refuel it. So when you apply this habit to electric cars, which is to deplete your battery and then you do a full charge all right but from using it i realize there are it's totally different it's like you wake up from home okay with a full charge because you charge at home even if you don't have a charger at home let's say you go to uh, uh one u or sunway or mid valley to meet a friend for lunch okay that is of course on the basis that you manage to find a charger but a lot of them have chargers these days and 
you charge your car, right? While you have lunch. When you're done with lunch, your car is charged. That's the interesting part. Okay, and then you go and meet a client somewhere in Klang and then after meeting him, pass him something, you need to head back straight. You're not meeting him for coffee or whatnot. But as you come back, you need to go and meet another person in another location. And if that location has a charger, you park your car, you charge, and when you reach home, you'll be on 90% or 80% charge or 85% charge and then you plug in if your home has a charger so the whole usage regime is totally different from refueling so I experienced this during Chinese New Year when when I was test driving the smart EV the smart uh, hashtag one and the car is down to like 16-17% I was doing it whole day going here and there and all that and then I have to go for a family dinner at a restaurant nearby and it's Chinese New Year the whole place is full double park but somehow there, are, there is a charge Sini charger there and I immediately downloaded the app and hook up my credit card and book the spot and seeing it release the spot for me and then I park my car there it's a DC charger and uh, I activated through the app and plug in my smart and then I go in for my family dinner all right and then as I come back out which is like quite a long dinner it's like four hours later the car is fully charged which is a fantastic thing I just go for dinner and after dinner my car is fully charged so I hope you get what I mean that when there are more and more chargers uh, that's our usage regime however however I believe the government should pledge something for EV car makers. They have to, all of them who sell EV cars in Malaysia should, or should be on a 1 to 10 ratio of every 10 car you sell, you must enact an, a DC charger, not AC, uh, a DC charger in anywhere anywhere of your picking you know so i think the government should actually release the rules and all that like thailand you know a lot of people can install chargers in front of their shops to earn extra money in front of their house to earn extra money i think the government should do this i mean less and less parties coming in to make a say like dbkl tnb suruhan jaya tanaga bomba everybody wants to have a say everybody wants a piece of that little pie frustrates this whole building of charges okay so the government should make do something and just come up straight and say this is the rule this is the law now you 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 shut up okay he is in charge that's it fair and square nothing else so that should be the case but the slowdown of the deployment of all this right i think first of all is that 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 bureaucracy with, with installing charger that's the first thing the second thing the apps the apps you know our government spent billions in developing a super app during covid time my sajatara okay now that my sajatara is useless can i please urge me tea and um, whatever multimedia whatever super corridor blah blah whatever minister right please do something please enforce every single app out there to have a plug-in into my sajatara so that we can have a super app with one view we can see everybody's charger on one map instead of having to download whatever donkey ass maps out there and when everybody is developing their own app right the vulnerability of the app uh, not every app is as as good is as user friendly right so i really want a super app that has everybody's chargers there plug in and forced by the government so that it makes things easier easier for consumers or touch and go please touch and go uh, allow them a plug in so we can just we all have touch and go app just use touch and go and then click charging and then it detects my location it tells me whereabouts you know that would be wonderful i hope that happens and that will help the deployment of charges that would help
yeah, all that. Overall, uh, is the car easy to use? I mean, it's icon base. Icon base uh, systems, first day you won't know where everything is. Second day you will know where everything is. You know, it doesn't try to, you know, it doesn't, it's not like BMW trying have icon and have linear menu at the same time, both at the same time. Uh, yeah, so these type of systems, they are not the fastest when it comes to going into accessing what you want to do, but uh, they are always easy to learn and easy to operate over time, okay? Uh, like I mentioned just now, wireless charger here, please, 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 electric car makers, China car makers, every single car maker, I know the in thing is to have a wireless charging pad now, but as we all have experienced, wireless charging heats up our phone. I forgot which car was it, but there was only one car that I see so far that has an aircon vent blowing at the wireless charging pad, which is a fantastic thing because like it or not, wireless charging just heats up our phone. They don't charge very fast. It's a new technology that is not a good technology. I don't like wireless charging until now. If they can solve the heating issue, uh, if I can put my phone there without it heating up and then it charges fast enough, like a fast charging, super fast charging, whatnot, then I'll, I'll love it. At this juncture, they are slow, they heat, up our, they heat up our phone, and I just don't like wireless chargers, all right? Other than that, fantastic car. Does it feel like a 200,000 ringgit car? Of course, but it's an EV. EVs are tax-free. If it is tax, it will be 400,000. So does it feel like a 400,000 car? It accelerates like one, it rides like one. Uh, not everybody will pay if it is tax, all right? 400,000 for a BYD. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, anything else? Uh, the bottom part of the door certainly doesn't feel like a 400,000 ringgit car if it were a 400,000 ringgit car. If it's a 200,000 ringgit car, uh, the bottom part also, but everybody's uh, forgiven when Mercedes-Benz does it, right? So, yep, very comfortable car. Performance is fantastic. I don't see a reason in wanting the performance model, even though it's only 30,000 more. But if you buy the performance model, you can surprise or bully 911s, Audi RS6s, sports cars and all that. You can bully them. Yes, you lose some mileage, but yeah, it's only 30,000 difference and 30,000 is nothing because a lot of people, when you buy a premium variant and then you go and do a full car PPF, you already arrive at the price of the performance model, okay? And uh, don't PPF this type of car, okay? No point. I break earlier than him, than my instructor. <laughs> I see further than him. <laughs> uh, steering, of course, no feel but it's accurate enough, it's tidy enough. Uh, the chassis uh, is well controlled. Just now I did the sudden lane change at 80 kmh. Stable. Yeah, feels like a premium chassis. That's most important, okay? Headliner, nothing. The glass roof is not, it's not hot at all. It's a crazy hot day and the sun is right above me. It's not hot at all. Some really good, uh, very good in terms of the heat rejection okay I love the whole center console here so solid man the build oh I'm worried for Japanese cars and certainly worried for Korean cars you know um, they have to buckle up they have to buckle up it's so solid the build is so solid China cars build is crazy. Look at Tesla, they are now being assembled in China. They are so solid versus those assembled in USA. Huh. Huh. This material, I like, I like. Okay. Anything else? 
I really wish for a lower sitting position. I, I believe if the seat can lower by another three inch, you know, if I can sit another three inch lower, I can sit further behind and I have a more GT car kind of driving position, I would have really appreciated it, you know. Yeah, if I can sit lower, I'll be sitting like that. You know, that would be nice. Okay. Super comfy. The seats are super comfy. I wish I have these seats in my Porsche. They're my old Porsche 911. Yeah, if I can have these seats, right, it will be so nice. That old Porsche also sits, sits very high. Perhaps you can try one of Shut up. Yep. Ah, uh, nothing nothing else except heading back. Okay. Uh, see you guys. Let's check the charging speed. Now, how do I check the charging speed? Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, traffic jam anyway. Uh, Okay. Still uploading here. Why is it so slow? Still uploading. What the heck? All three of my uploads, only TikTok is done. And uh, YouTube is sleeping. What is it doing? What is it doing? Why did it stop down uploading? Bugger. Damn. Yeah. Is 76% now. I'm gonna leave it here. See if it's able to maintain its charge because I'm uploading stuff. Yeah, when we arrive, okay? Turn this back. Somehow horizontal feels like there's more room in the car versus the vertical ones. Okay. Does it have Spotify? Please log in. In for me, ma. See, that's the thing. Even though our cars can do a lot of things with our phones these days, right? There's only so much you can do because if you're charging, you're running your navigation, and you hook up your blue your songs through your Bluetooth and all that, right? The whole phone's gonna just heat up. Slow. Uh, I'm talking about the uploads. Uh, that's standard KL traffic. The glass is slightly tinted. Stock standard glass. And uh, this design, the design of the car, by isolation it looks good, but in traffic it's a bit con inconspicuous. It's not like sometimes when you drive a new car, people will be like, oh, everybody slowing down their cars and look at you. This one, not much. You know, not much. People just assume you're there. But of course, these are people who are in the traffic trying to get about on their, on their everyday life and uh, they obviously they won't be looking around I'm not going to stop the video because uh, this is how you jam in the BYD seal. I love the seats, man. Oh, does it have aircon seats? It doesn't? Ah! The other day I was in the smart hashtag one. 
it has the aircon seats. But that car is 230,000 ringgit. That's the thing. That one is 30k more expensive than this. It doesn't ride anywhere near this. Anywhere. In terms of ride quality, there's no comparison. In fact, that one also doesn't ride as well as the Arto 3. BYD Cars knows a thing or two about chassis and ride quality. All their cars so far has excellent ride quality punching way be, be above their price point in terms of ride quality yeah but that one has icon seats yeah all right i hope you guys have a uh, not very good idea of how it drives on a high speed corner uh, so but nevertheless this is, this is how EV cars should be used in the city. In the city. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh, I used my left indicator again. I hate this sound. This one sounds like some blind spot warning or something. Thank you. Heading back, heading back. Turn left. Really good ride. Very good suspension. Hmm. Yep. One hundred seventy nine thousand for this. I think it's a bargain. It's uh around the price of a Mazda three. See, this is what is going against Mazda 3 in Malaysia. But take note of BYD, Auto, and take note electric cars currently the road tax is free, okay, but it will be a lot later on, which I think is a flawed calculation, okay. Every single road tax in Malaysia, the pricing of road tax must and should be charged in accordance to the insured value of the car. 1% of insured value and we're done. Okay, we're forever good. Okay, I know it's going to be a little bit more expensive for the likes of uh, Vior City Myvi, but they have been paying ridiculously low road tax anyway, which doesn't make sense. 50 ringgit, 60 ringgit road tax, your ad the administrative cost of issuing your road tax alone is higher than what you're paying the government. Okay, so I think 1% should be fantastic so first year road tax for this car 1800 as it depreciates to 100,000 it will be 1000 as it depreciates to 50,000 it will be 500 all right so that's how I think it should be no P or P is over here off is here okay there we go some weird music all right and we're done cheers to our media friends, we'd like to share with you that lunch a is ready. A lot of you people are checking out the car. The Where do I even start? <laughs> yeah, let's be big face a bit. Straight up walk up to this one in the right in the middle. Well, we are not uh, unfamiliar with how the BYD seal looks because Malaysia has been getting it quite a bit later than other markets. I've been seeing this car last year in uh, Thailand when we did the Evo Enduro. Oh, for those of you who stumble upon my account, I am Bobby and uh, welcome to my channel and uh, I review cars. Anyway, let's have a look at the car.
now it's not it's not something that we're not familiar with now let's, let's go through the design the front end dips extremely low so if you look at the height of this where the height of the bonnet is it's actually on my right below my belt line and this one is right at my knees so um, for a car that doesn't have a very long bonnet it actually has a very steep slope going down here this if i'm not wrong if this car went into a, a bumper to bumper bump <laughs> if that's a word i think it should reach like cars like what mclaren or or ferrari in terms of how low the front end dips now that helps with aerodynamics because the smaller your initial frontal area is this is the initial frontal area the smaller it is uh, or the sharper it is the lower your coefficient uh, drag is all right so this car has a very low coefficient drag 0 0.219 and uh, the seal unlike the tesla model 3 which the tesla model 3 aims to delete whatever they can delete from the car so if you look at the design philosophy or the manufacturing philosophy right i would say that byd uh, byd's products are unlike tesla in the most significant way which would be byd gives you everything a premium car should have whereas tesla's idea is to remove as much unnecessary stuff as possible from the cars so they remove everything because if you look at a car like that right every single thing costs money right you have your headlamps you have your advanced led headlamps you have your daytime running lights you have these really nice signature kind of wave-like structure led down below and then they are housed behind a gloss black uh, panel that sort of dresses up like a uh, uh, side intake and there are actually air ducts over here that goes to the wheel well and then you have below the diffusers the bumper it's like a front diffuser if i may okay and in front is the big byd logo and then on the sides they even have the the side gills you know it's a it's a design feature where you know a lot of premium cars would have it but this one is purely purely for cosmetic purposes i kind of wish that it would be nice if actually byd integrate some uh indicator leds behind this or something but of course the indicators are here the cameras are here the uh side mirror housing uh this thing is actually aero design i mean i mean wind goes through there there's a nfc sensor over here and then up front you have a 235 45 19 inch tire eco contact 6 which is continentals uh tires for evs because evs are massively heavier than normal ICE cars the tires have to be built a little bit different as well to be more resistant to wear as well now the door handles are the pop-up type which has been a very popular option for car makers especially from china they like door handles like these that you know sunken in into the door panels and then they pop out as you unlock the car okay now the whole window frame is gloss black okay front and back is gloss black so that it has a very sporty feel because this one is the performance model okay and um, inside familiar design from byd uh, very fluid type of design that they have here you'll see that there is the uh, lower console space the upper part and um, are you gonna go in yeah, going yeah please please go ahead <laughs> all right let me go through the material of the door up here soft touch uh, stitchings these are real stitchings all right um, and then over here it's like a 
Alcantara kind of material, but it's definitely not Alcantara or it's sweet or it's whatnot. Here is very nice. I love this material. Very, very smooth, very, very soft. And this one is a very smooth plastic. Feels cold to the touch, almost like a brushed aluminium kind of material, but I'm certainly it is some high quality plastic. Here we have a sort of like a plexi kind of material with the ambient lighting inside. Of course, you can change color. And then here is this material again. Extremely, extremely nice to the touch kind of material. It's, it's definitely not leather. It's some synthetic material, but it feels like the highest of highest grade of leather, if it were, okay? If there is a leather that touches like this, right, um, that has to be like the, I don't know, it's really nice to the touch, okay? Down here, of course, we have some harder plastics, but these are not the type that will hurt your your knuckles when you knock them. It's, the, it's what I call the, not a scratchy type, but it's acceptable material quality. Here, the door bins are not full length because they place the speakers over here and then they have the boot release over here and then all, all these are very logically placed uh, this is just uh, you see the child lock is over here the window switches door lock and unlock uh, to control the left side mirror right side mirror and even have one more button to retract both side mirrors as well and these are equipped with the diner audio uh, sound system high quality sound system and this whole thing it's a nice quality material. All right, again, it's this type of hinge. You know, it's a big door handle. The hinge is over here. So you're gonna exert a lot of force here. So be careful when you operate the car. All right, the paint quality looks really good. There's a glass top on top and uh, whoa, full glass. There are no metal in between. This is like a panoramic roof. All right, let's go in and have a look. Down here is plastic, this is metal, and then the pedals are good, organ-type pedal. There's a nice footrest over here. These are for the fuses, I suppose. No, it's a compartment that is covered in felt, pretty high quality. But this part here is all this type of plastic, okay? Let's come inside here. Okay, come inside here. We have a screen right up front, very high resolution. Um, I think it, it will display whatever that is needed and then on top of it there is the daytime uh, not the, the heads up display over here and then up here this is this is those poly uh, injection mold polyurethane material up here is hard plastic and then down here this material is the same as this and these are some patterns you can't actually adjust the air direction. That means the aircon vents are all controlled uh, electromechanically. All right, these are these are all controlled via the screen. So to change the direction of air and all that, you don't have a physical knob for you to control it. This is the same material as this, almost like Alcantara. So the touch points are fantastic. All the touch points of this car is finished in a collection of different materials which makes the interior looks nicer instead of you know a one whole door panel that is consists of one material here you can see one two three four five six type of material now the steering wheel steering wheel is in a good size the girth isn't too thick it has sort of like an almost flat bottom kind of design we're familiar with this design this has that auto Auto 3 feel to it, okay? There is the Auto 3 feel to it. Uh, these are all physical buttons, so you can see this is to activate the lane keep assist, all right? And then this is to, I, I believe this would be activating all the safety systems or the camera, and then this is to adjust your distance between the car in front and you. This is to set your cruise control and also increase speed or reduce speed. This one would rotate the screen. Okay, you press this and then it rotates the screen. 
okay up here this one would be to control this you can change the modes of display oh this one does this so you toggle through different types of uh, entertainment modes okay as for this one let me see what does this do maybe to oh this is for your songs and your music phone call you know voice control voice command this one is to control this one you can change different modes all right driving time average speed and all that so pretty much handy whatever you need on the steering wheel is there these are your light controls your light control stock would have automatic headlamps and all that pretty standard um, one push button on the right this one is probably to control i don't know that's the wiper for the the speed and also the the intervals okay down here you have two chi charger over here are there any air vents that blows to the charger nope i really think car makers who have wireless charging should direct some aircon air towards the charging pad because all they do is just to heat up your phone on long distance drives okay down here we have this little cute crystal gear knob which is very popular now uh, you have bmw you have porsche everybody going to these small little knobs because that's all you need and it doesn't obstruct you from operating with whatever is in the center console okay this one all these are pretty familiar all right your different driving modes and interestingly your aircon auto switch and all that is over here this one is for the volume this one is for the cars sports or normal and all that your hazard lights are here start stop the car parking brakes are here and of course you have a plethora of controls inside the screen because these china cars are really advanced when it comes to software and all that they have everything ready for you the glove box is all covered in felt another hallmark of what premium cars should have okay so very nice it has that sun visors you have this is a good one good supplier you know the one i hated is the one where the lights are here and then there's a switch over here where you need to slap the sun visor to turn it off these are touch i guess not sure okay now up here we have a full glass panoramic roof i believe it should have electrochromatic if it doesn't that would suck now these ones are the cup holders and this is unusually well built for a center glove box okay and this again is that really nice material again for some reason there is a nfc sensor here very obvious location but not the most obvious of location to have something lying there i don't know know why i just love the kind of when i go into china cars right i stumble upon a lot of unique materials that i have never touched before in other european mix they have their own supplier network they have their own types of you know materials this material down below here is a really fantastic material it's not leather it's not plastic i've never touched this before this can only exist on the smoothest of smoothest baby cow butt or whatnot but i'm sure it's not leather the compartment down here is huge okay you have all the sockets you have your 12 volt sockets you have your usb ports chargers and all that over there obviously this car will have rear aircon vents and in terms of seat support it is fantastic all right the stitching on the seats the cross stitching the isofix even on the front seats look at how soft this is really nice all right so that's the whole front of the byd seal let's go <coughs> to other spots and uh oh, hello hi and here we go now and okay. oh there's uncle ys waiting oh, yeah. sorry I, I wait for you. <laughs> okay at the back of the seat here this looks really sporty but in a way also it's very largely built so that uh rear rear passenger this is my okay. eye vantage okay. point so in terms hold of on, in terms of my visibility i am some not somewhat almost all yes. being blocked by this front seat okay 
and here it's really nice and here I like the fact that there is a pocket here two pockets this is a big one okay this is nice and uh, USB ports okay now the rear look at my knees this goes full length I really like the seat material quality in this car all right another thing is the angle of my seat okay so here two cup holders rubberized material all right this is nice overall this is a very spacious car uh, I wish the seats are mounted a lot higher so that I can slot my feet in easier Currently, it's actually a bit low, but overall space is in abundance in the back here. Okay, the, the roof line is also pretty low. So going in and out for someone who is a little bit taller, just take note, but it's not bad. It's not bad, bad, bad. Okay, overall, China cars build are amazing these days. Okay, now coming to the side, you have all those design lines and then down here, some unique stuff as well. Okay, more for stylistic purposes. Now come to the rear, you have the tail lights, which are, it's like a norm now. Every single EV has to have a single stripe tail light, uh, diffusers, cameras, cameras, sensors, and all that. Right, these are, again, I believe is purely for stylistic purposes. Okay, huge BYD logo at the back. That's the release for the boot, powered boot. Okay, it would be nice if it is a hatch that opens up because for cars with a very sleek body line, uh, you hamper the opening when it's just the boot that is open. Okay, overall, pretty big. I like the fact that this is not a thin material. This is nice and thick. And uh, the boot is not the largest for this type of car. All right, it's not the largest for this type of car, but it's more than enough. All right, <laughs> all right, I have Abang Gun helping me to close the boot. There we go. You can see the little black tip over there just to basically they put a lot of effort in the design of the car. Okay, so yep, this is uh, a detailed look at the BYD seal. I'm gonna go drive it later. All right, cheers.